Hello everyone. Welcome to General Sciences Module 41. Today's lesson is on the human nervous system. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. The nervous system is made of two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of the brain, which contains the cerebrum, brain stem and cerebellum and the spinal cord. Uh, the peripheral nervous system is made of uh, nerves and neural ganglia. So uh, the meninges or the three membranes that envelop the brain and the spinal cord are also part of the nervous system. The main cell of the nervous system are neurons. In addition to neurons, the nervous system is also made of glial cells. Neurons are cells that are function of receiving and transmitting neural impulses. Glial cells support, feed and electrically insulate the neurons. One common example of glial cell uh, uh, are the so-called Schwann cells that produce the myelin sheath of the peripheral nervous system. Now the neuron uh, is the functional unit of the nervous system. It has three parts. Dendrites, cell body and axon. Dendrites receive information from another cell and transmit the message to the cell body. Um, and uh, the cell body contains the nucleus, mitochondria and other organelles. The axon conducts uh, messages uh, fr uh, away from the cell body. So uh, there are three types of neurons. <coughs> sensory, motor and inter. Sensory neurons carry messages um, from the sensory receptors to the central nervous system. Motor neurons transmit messages from the central nervous system to the muscles. And interneurons are found only in the central nervous system where they connect neuron to neuron. Now some axons are wrapped in a myelin sheath by specialized glial cells known as the Schwann cells. The gap between Schwann cells is known as the node of Ranvier and serves as points along the neuron for generating a signal. Now what are synapses? Synapses are the structure that transmit a neural impulse between two neurons. When the electric impulse arrives, the presynaptic membrane of the axon releases neurotransmitters that bind to the postsynaptic receptors of the dendrites of the next cell, so thus forming a chain. The activated state of these receptors alters the permeability of the dendritic membrane and the electric depolarization moves along the plasma membrane of the neuron to its axon. We come to the human brain. The brain is made up of three main sections, the forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. So, um, forebrain is the largest and most complex part of the brain. It consists of cerebrum and some other structures. Beneath it, the cerebrum contains information that essentially makes us who we are. That is our intelligence, memory, speech, ability to feel. Specific areas of cerebrum in charge of possessing this different type of information. Now, the cerebrum has four lobes. They are called the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe and occipital lobe. The cerebrum also has a right and left halves called hemispheres which are connected in the middle by a band of nerve fibers which are known as corpus callosum. They enable the right and the left brain to communicate. Now the left side is considered the logical, analytical and objective side and the right side is thought to be more intuitive, creative and subjective. The outer layer of the cerebrum is called the cortex also known as uh, gray matter. Information, uh, information collected by the five senses comes into the brain and uh, the sp uh, from the spinal cord to the cortex and this information then gets directed to other parts of the nervous system for further processing. Uh, the inner part of the forebrain sits the thalamus, hypothalamus and pituitary gland. The thalamus carries messages from the sensory organs like eyes, ears, nose and fingers to the cortex. The hypothalamus controls the pulse, thirst, appetite, sleep patterns and other processes in our body which happen automatically. Um, it also controls the pituitary gland which makes hormones that control our growth, metabolism, digestion, sexual maturity and response to stress. Now the midbrain. 
Uh, the midbrain uh, is located underneath the middle of the forebrain and acts as a master coordinator for all messages going in and out of the brain to the spinal cord. So that is like the message center. The hindbrain sits, sits underneath the back end of the cerebrum and consists of cerebellum, pons and medulla. The cerebellum is also known as the little brain because it looks like a small version of the cerebrum and is responsible for balance, movement and coordination. The pons and the medulla along with the midbrain are often called the brain stem. The brain stem takes in, sends out and coordinates all of the brain's messages. It also controls many of the body's automatic functions like breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, swallowing, digestion and blinking. Finally, the spinal cord, uh, which is a long bundle of nerve tissues about 18 inches long and 3 4 of an inch thick. It extends from the lower part of the brain down through the spine along the way, various nerve branches out to the entire body. These are called the peripheral nervous system. Uh, both the brain and the spinal cord are protected by bone. The brain is protected by the skull and the spinal cord is protected by a set of ring-shaped bones called vertebrae. They are both cushioned by layers of membranes called meninges and a special fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. That's all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel GK Today. Until the next tutorial, goodbye.